Uh, welcome to another Coffee with Sam, sir, uh, where we talk with ASX companies and their managing directors and, and people who actually make those decisions on, on, on these projects. Um, and we've got today Andrew Radonjic here with us from Venture Minerals, and we're going to be trying to sort of go through the thoughts uh, process as behind the Thor uh, project, where uh, Chalice is the JV partner, and they're actually just starting up um, a geophysical program. And how what that means and where that leads um so andrew take it away well look great to be uh, talking again to you now we've got uh we've got many projects and many things happening so it's, it's good to for uh our southwest or, or tour project uh, target specifically uh to get you know the due attention it deserves um you know our our joint venture partner chalice who uh, obviously had some very successful 12 months um, you know, are getting uh, getting on the ground now at uh, at Tor, and uh, looking to do some um, some you know ground moving loop EM work, um, you know, very very soon. So that's uh, that's very encouraging for us, and hopefully they'll start generating results, and, and they can use all their their knowledge and skills from their Julemar discovery to uh, hopefully repeat the same for uh, for our joint venture ground down there. Yeah, I mean, when when we we talked about this, you know, probably a couple of months ago, even more, about that that yeah. Thor's a, a sort of the Julema look alike, you know, I think when you look at the image, it's almost uh, even the structure, the shape of the the anomalies is almost comparable. Um, you know, obviously they're obviously going on the ground now, and, and they're going to try and repeat the success. Where, when, when, when you guys obviously own the project and, and, and had some work and you've drilled that hole and as you can see the core there that, um, you know, it's, it's not a sort of a blind exploration target, if you want to put it that way. No. Um, what's your thoughts, you know, how they move forward on this project? Well, look, uh, it's an interesting project, you know, um, that Southwest project. It's had a, you know, it was originally part of a lithium play. You know, we, we sort of, uh, our experience in terms of tin back at Mount Lindsay again, we knew that you know, tin's associated with pegmatite, so looking for another green bushes effectively, uh, but using tin as a pathfinder rather than everyone else is just pegging uh, old, um, you know, lithium anomalies, so, you know, or tantalum even, but tin sort of, that's what we, that's what we looked for. And, um, and, you know, when we come across a project, we'd, we'd found that, um, you know, tech had been, down there, and they'd put the very first VTEM survey back in 2005, I think it was, you know, at 15 metre resolution. It was like, you know, really new technology. First time it was done in Australia, it's, it's Canadian technology, tech being Canadian, of course. And, um, you know, they, they made a discovery called the Kingsley VMS, they called it a meta, metamorphic VMS discovery, but uh, just a little bit too narrow, and a junior came and drilled a few holes. and. You know, even though uh, our tour target is uh, is near it, it's not really an extension, obvious extension. But we sort of we were getting some pathfinder. You know, t tin is one of those, and we were, it was ticking the box. I'm going, okay, this is interesting. Um, you know, let's uh, let's test. And there's a huge EM coincidental EM anomaly sitting on top, which hadn't been tested by by tech. Tech walked away once they done their work at Kingsley. And, Move on to other things. You know, obviously they're looking for, they're not looking for VMSs. They're looking for, um, you know, something much larger, something that produces 500,000 tons of, of nickel metal and concentrate per annum, not 50,000 tons. And, and for them, they went. Oh, I said, oh well, they sort of cast as brushed. It was all VMS, and we thought, okay, well, VMS is usually occur in clusters. So we were sort of, we were, I suppose, encouraged by that concept. You know, being in the same, you know, uh, area, and we. We did our first hole, which was co-funded by the state government and in uh, Diggers and Dealers in 2018. We announced it's 17 metres of sulphides and we went, well, hang on, we thought, you know, maybe it's going to be a, a banded iron, just lots of magnetite. But we were pleasantly surprised about the complexity. But it is, you know, it's all been highly metamorphosed. Um, so, you know, you have to do a lot of geochemistry or chemistry on the rocks to sort of start getting your eye on what the rocks could, could have been, what they were originally, the protolift. Um, so... You know, we spent um, you know those first the first couple of holes, and we you know we got a fair bit of sulphide in the system. We went, okay, well, why don't we just spend some money on 2018 technology, 50 centimeter resolution? You know, it's kind of like you know it's apples and oranges, really huge difference. And we end up generating uh, you know about 13 targets at our southern 
six and a half kilometres, about 20 kilometre long mag feature down there. Um, and uh, all the rest of the area was affected by um, uh, infrastructure such as power, power lines straight, up, straight above the target zone, typical, it's another hellier story, this is, but uh, straight along there or, or, um, or you know, telephone uh, transmitters. And anyway, it was a bit of a nightmare. So, so we sort of had 13 targets and the last two holes we drilled actually targeted these conductive shells going for the highest, strongest EM response. And hole four hit a lot of sul hit more sulphide again, big zones of sulphide uh, disseminated. Uh, but we got, you know, more importantly, in hole five, our last hole, 2.4 metres of massive sulphide. And then that's, that's a piece of it just here. Noel, you can, you can see the chunks of, of chalka pyrite. And, you know, I feel, I look, it's amazing when I saw the Julemar discovery come out, and even uh, Mawson came out not around about the same time. You looked at a core and you went, my God, that looks bloody remarkably familiar. Mm. Uh, you know, big chunks of chunk of pyrite sitting in, in anything it could be pyrite or, uh, or maybe there's some penlidite in there, uh, type of matrix. So we, we were pretty excited, and, and, but we were still very much focused on the VMS side of things. Um, and like I said, this is, you've got to get the timing right. The timing's like late 2018. Mawson and Julema, early 2020, early last year. So we're sitting there trying to, Think, look at this VMS, trying to make it fit. And we sort of, we had this, you know, um, there was half a percent copper, which is, you know, fair enough, about 2.4 metres. But then we, and we had a couple of grams of silver, which is, again, for a VMS, fair enough, a little bit of gold, but then, and even a little bit of cobalt, 0.04%, which is anomalous in VMS systems mm -hmm. as well. But the nickel threw us, you know, the half a percent, a 0.05% nickel, that's too much nickel. For a bit VMS and, and and a bit of palladium just spiked up and mm. you know this is this is kind of mixed signals and you know we had 13 targets we put two holes in the centre of 13 of that of two of those 13 targets so for a company with a lot of projects um, we thought well we're going to need some deep pockets so we look for a joint venture partners and for that 2019 period you know we were out there and and and, and companies would come in and on the on the back, on the back of a uh, looking for copper or a VMS style, and uh, you know they, they struggled a little bit. You know, like like you know we couldn't pigeonhole this project, mm. and uh, and then you know obviously um, Chalice saw something in this. They they made a discovery in early 2020, and then uh, and clearly they recognised that potential. You know to come do a joint venture with us. You know by the end of July uh, that same year. So it's. Um, yeah, it's uh, the projects. Um, it's gone from lithium to VMS to Julemar style targeting. Um, but you know what you tend to find, I, I feel, is that if there's some mineralisation there, usually there's, there's a lot happening, and it's not just on one style mm. of mineralisation. And um, and certainly nobody could recognise what we'd hit, including ourselves, um, and because nobody had hit it yet. It's a brand new thing, mm. uh, and I think to have um, you know chalice who are sort of leading the way with this sort of style of mineralisation, which you know is still still getting classified, is um, you know a huge win for have those sort of specialists, and it, it's something that you know the idea of getting a joint venture done is to bring those discoveries forward. Mm. Clearly, chalice have the money, they have the IP, um, you know that, that's very important. And, and for venture, you know, we have, you know, you know, the terms are not onerous for them. You know, that spent three hundred thousand dollars by uh, the end of July this year, uh, which obviously they're doing with the EM work. Um, but, you know, it, um, you know, there's a position there where we can hold our ground at thirty percent. So, if our Riley project's making the money we're expecting it to make, then you know we've got an option about maybe holding a position in having a thirty percent of a, a potential another Jorma. Mm. You know, mm. which Mm. Market cap's two billion dollars. Yeah. Um, you know, you could you could argue that's you know probably going to add multiples to our current current market cap, yeah. which is um, yeah interesting. Yeah. I mean, when you when I looked at the history of Julia um, prior, I think up to a month prior to um, this is just by going through the sequence of announcements, uh, and a month prior to the discovery, they were still talking about other projects. So. In some ways, you know, they may have, you know, sort of 
stumbled onto it, but not not in the blind way. I'm sure they've done work on it as well, um, and they've made the discovery. In in, in uh, you know when when you look at them doing your um, this JV with you very early on, they would have been sort of eyes open, ears to the ground, what could be out there, and this is sort of like you know. Well, in an area where you, not many people would have thought you're going to find a, a major deposit the size of what it is, yes. which is where, where it was in the wheat belt, I'm sure when they're looking at your stuff, they're going, oh, well, you know, this could be similar. And, and doing that two months, three months straight after the, the major discovery like that seems to make it think, oh, they must be wanting to cover all their bases, right? You know, the Julema type, because it's, it's different. It's different, as you say, right? Mm. Um, does that give you sort of the confidence that maybe what you guys are looking at, maybe you start thinking, mm, you know, maybe what that was a bit strange, maybe make more sense now and realizing what you've got. Well, look, uh, I, you know, I, I go back to night, like every junior company was pegging neurology ground and, and, and you know, like, but. You know, Charles has done a good job of sort of protecting their position. Um, so um, we we sort of uh, went turned to exploration and said, "Oh, look, you know, is there any ground around there that's worth having?" And they said, "Well, look, look, Andrew. Frankly, I think we've got you know a potential jewel mine just sitting on our hands." And and you know, we looked metamorphic terrain, same, same sort of you know, generally the geology is the same. It's a big tick, uh, chrome-rich rocks. And if you go back and you look at the jewel of my, if you went back and look at the history, you know, they've got chrome rich rocks. Strange that they're where well, they are, but they've got mm. the chrome rich rocks. And when you look at the uh, the Southwest Yilgarn database that exists, uh, that the LME has, um, we, um, we've got chrome rich rocks. In fact, we pegged some more ground <laughs> mm. on that basis because we knew that there was more ultramafic around. Um, so we pe actually pegged more ground, um, sort of holding our position. And, uh, and then we got the knock at the door. Um, but, you know, look, yes, uh, as, as, as I sort of, you know, said to the board, you know, we can say we've got a jewel in my lookalike, but there's nothing says it better than Chalice putting their money where their mouth is and having a crack at our tour project mm. and seeing mm. what they can deliver. And in, in the, there is history of nickel exploration. Western Mining have been down there, Anaconda have been down there. Um, so the areas, again, and I, and I think I've spoken about this before, it's an area that people come um, during, if you like, boom times, and the boom may be because of an exploration success boom or maybe because of commodities going up, but people just don't go into southwest Yorgan because it's, it's cooked up, it's harder to find these things, and, and, and there's a maybe an old but an incorrect perception that you know, it's all stretched out and you'll never get nothing that's economic, blah, blah, blah. And, and then all of a sudden people start drilling holes, they're making discoveries. And there's no, we are still in the Yilga and we're still where, you know, there's a, there's a Kalgoorlie, there's a Cambalda, there's a, you know, there's, there's a Mount Key. You know, all those great nickel mines up through, you know, from Cambalda up to, you know. Now there's a Julema. And now there's a Julema. <laughs> I mean, where does that fit, you know? But at the end of the day, it's still in the Yilga. Yeah. So once you go west of Southern Cross Belt, it becomes hard. So you've got Forestonia, there's another nickel mine there, and there's, you know, there's western areas, you know. So, so why isn't there any more nickel west of Southern Cross? Well, mm. the answer is there is now, but the question is it's a big area. Is there more? Yeah. I think, you know, when you look at their discovery and a couple of announcements, the first one, and they looked at, they basically did what most people looking for these nickel deposits do, is do the geophysics, find where you potentially have these plates, as they say, drill a few holes. You know, I heard someone say last week, you know, now it's, everything's geophysical. And you go there, you drill the hose, holes, and then if you don't hit it, you go, well, what do we do now? Whereas in geochemical, and I say, oh, yeah, you've got a bit of this more, a bit less, you know, and there's, there's a sniff. But, I mean, obviously, Julema had, the, they, they did, that's exactly what what did what most people would do do the geophysics find those plates drill the plates and they hit it 
it's, it's that's quite simple I guess that I assume would be what they're trying to do now in Thor right do the, the, the geophysics get those sickness well you know, they've got their own in-house geophysicist um, so they, they'll be using maybe different algorithms and all that sort of thing so they would have learned as well they would more, have learned, yeah. uh, exactly that. and, and we, we, we will be able to benefit from that you know so uh, they'll go down there and you know, we've got the airborne EM, and quite often, you know, the people do is they do the airborne EM, then they do the land based EM, and, and and that's what they're doing now. And you know, what Venture's done is Venture's gone through, and we've done, you know, we've got access to the ground, which is, you know, was, has been an issue for those guys as well with, um, you know, conservation management plans on on, on uh, state forests, you know, and, and our state forest down there is very active. So, you know, so we, we spent a lot of time getting access. So we've got the, got the access done, we've got a good base load of information and we've drilled some holes and we've done some airborne EM so we're sort of they, the, their benefit for them was is that they come and hit the ground running because all of a sudden they go oh, we'll just add a bit more we'll do the next step and then you know we're uh, you know very hopeful that I'll be drilling later this year mm, mm. You know, and then, so you know hold on you know if we get another one of these sort of things but you know they hit it first hole and that's unusual you know it doesn't always happen like that and uh, you know who knows how close we were. You know, we'd, we'd our, we'd our, you know, we picked as many stories. Many stories, but uh, yeah, you know. Um, but uh, you know, time will tell, of course. But uh, um, yeah, you just don't know. Are you 50 meters away or 100 meters away? And you know, the, the tenure to nickel at Dulama, it's you know, when I got 0.05 percent nickel, yeah, yeah, they're not getting a lot more than that already. It's the it's the palladium particularly that sort of is elevated and, and um, so um, yeah look uh, you know we're, we're thereabouts you know if you think about it and um, so you know um, I think the share price is the dollar for Chalice when they did the JV but now they're six odd dollars <laughs> and um, and uh, obviously we've, we've we've gone up as well but for different reasons because we've got yeah that's right that, but, um, but I think it's a, it's a bit of a bit of a sleeper um, and you know, I think uh, I think probably there's no valuation in our in the market cap of our company. I don't think there's anything to, about this project because for nine months they've been preparing themselves to get on the ground and get familiar with it and you know take over the project. Obviously, Julemar is you know is is a priority clearly, um, but um, you know they're, they're, that's why we sort of gave them sort of. You know, let's spend some significant money in the first year and mm. give them some, you know, some incentive to move forward, and and hopefully they'll, they'll um, you know, I'm pretty sure if they found a second one, it would, it would uh, add to their market cap. That's and, it's, and yours and, and and particularly ours, yes. <laughs> I mean, the good news with geophysics is that you're not going to be waiting six weeks for the results. So it's once they've done it, the processing time is is um, well. Uh, significantly less than say waiting for essays and things like that and um, and once they find that target I think if, if, if it's a juicy target um, as you say you know you could be drilling within months as opposed to multiple of months yeah look uh, I think once they get the information um, you know they've got uh, their own geophysical techniques so they've got their own geophysicist and he'll go through and run his algorithms and, and see what you know, data represents you know um, so we'll probably see you know that you know it's, there's a few several weeks of work um, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll work on that so probably in the middle of the year maybe do some ground truthing you know because uh, and then end of the day the data we did originally was on, based on the VMS suite so so they'll probably be complementing that with the information we got you know, everyone's got different styles of geochemical sampling and, and what techniques and, and even the, uh, you know, is it partial leaching, etc. So everyone's got a little bit di different styles. So, so they'll bring their, their, their IP again from, from the Julemar discovery, apply that and, uh, and prioritise the targets, you know, we get from the, they'll no doubt they'll get EM conductors because we know that because of the airborne. Mm -hmm. So they're basically honing in and getting a better norming easting and RL. So it is you know, it's a much better target by going ground and do the, do the moving loop EM work and that will, will zoom right in on that. So hopefully drilling, we're looking in, uh, you know, maybe as early as the third quarter or the fourth quarter of this year. Would it be too much of a stretch to say that because you're already seeing 
some geophysical anomalies in terms of the signature that and you've drilled and you have seen those mineralization small and uh, isolated that the, that the likelihood of them finding something not a, I'm not saying they'll find a Juluma but you would like that but something uh, that they can go chasing would that be a slightly higher percentage look I think you'd have to say yes you know we you know that that you know whole five um, with the massive sulfide was a um, you know big step forward hmm. and uh, you know we've got we've got the copper grade we've got the nickel grade almost that they've got uh, no doubt we've, I think I'm pretty sure we've got the cobalt and even the silver hmm. you know which you know and then probably in the early days they didn't talk much about silver it wasn't sort of maybe they didn't have a zone and who knows that how these these things are, are formed you know we're, we're lear they're, they're learning you know they're hmm. at the cutting edge and uh, will benefit of oh, the tour project or the southwest project the tour target will generate will benefit from that work so hopefully we can cut to the chase you know reasonably quickly but you know it's not gonna be exactly the same uh, but uh, yeah look i think um, you know the chances are you know i don't want to put a percentage on it but the chances are certainly are better um, because of past results and because of the fact we've got specialists mm. working on it yeah, I think, I mean, all projects are going to be, never going to be exactly the same. You might more of this, less of that. But, um, yeah, just a thought that came to me that, you know, maybe from, from an exploration geologist hat on saying, you know, there might be that chance because obviously you've got that historical um, aspects of things. Yes. Um, you may or may not find your Juluma, but you would think that you must be getting some sort of target better than a blind explorations oh, program absolutely look uh, you know they they've done very well and um, you know like i said before it's it's not always like that it might mm. be you know hole number 70. yeah we've heard yeah. of those stories before yeah. i think i think the, the bronze bronze wing gold discovery i think they i think they were doing the third last hole before they yeah they yeah. finally hit it and then you know the rest is history as they say but and uh you know golden grove Discovery story, you know, to, yeah. to sort of talk something a bit more closer to home. You know, you know, fifty holes drilled by Aztec. Yeah, yeah. Or sorry, it wasn't Aztec. It might have been Esso. I think it was Esso. Then Aztec drilled deeper. Yeah. Next hole, bang. You know, you just don't know. It's always great getting at the first hole, and sometimes you're a bit suspicious that maybe you've hit hit the best thing first, and there's nothing else to follow oh, up. Yeah, yeah. But in their case, that they're clearly getting, you know, lots of mineralisation in the area. Um, you know, so. You know, imagine, I always imagine, now here we are, we found your body and this is the hole we drill first and imagine that's the only hole you got Yeah. and you don't know which direction to go but later on you go, oh, why didn't we do that? Yeah, well, it's, yeah. it's never that easy but you cannot, it's easy to, to reflect, 2020, yeah. hindsight, all that sort of stuff. Oh, that's too many stories. I mean, Stockdale, <laughs> Argyle, Stockdale couldn't find this where the CRA did and then you got the DeGrusa thing and you got Nova story and... But uh, look, at this stage, guys, I'm always trying to get you guys to, to strongly encourage you guys to, um, you know, reach out, ask questions, uh, do the YouTube thing and subscribe and like. But, you know, uh, but most importantly, you know, I, I'm, the message I'm trying to get at is just that to give you guys an idea or, or a view of how things work and don't work, uh, what, what's actually the process. Uh, but again, you know, thank you, Andrew. Thanks for your time. Um, Pleasure Look, you know happy and um, hope we can follow the story and and uh, see how it goes and like like all your other stories we're waiting for you know the the golden groves and 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 things like that and cooling coming up um but um again thank you and let's let's um talk again absolutely all right all the best all right. thank you